The reason why I'm so passionate about combining traditional knowledge and Western science is I've always cared very deeply about wildlife and animals in general and it's always been something that I've carried with me and had with me and I think right now in the 21st century our, the species that we share this world with are in um, despair. I feel to some degree I'm here to sort of protect those animals and make sure that they have a voice. And for indigenous people, we feel like those animals are related to us. They are our direct ancestors. And so it's kind of like an opportunity to serve our ancestors and serve future generations too. But the owl is sort of at this interface. It makes for a good a symbol to be studying where all those worlds are at their confluence. I work with the Mexican spotted owl and so in order to study their reproduction and occupancy rates we visit historical nest sites and hoot. Ideally the male or female will respond to us and that'll let us know that a pair is occupying that site. And as a follow-up step, um, once we determine that a site is occupied by a pair, um, then we put out uh, live bait. And that's uh, live mice that we use. And the owl will come down and grab the mouse and take it to its nest. Right now, the biggest threat to the spotted owl is large stand-replacing wildfires. And so the only way to sort of reduce that risk for the Mexican spotted owl is to do field treatments and to do some forest thinning and remove some of the wood essentially out of those areas. It's about finding that balance though, you know, between um, providing habitat needs for the owl and reducing fire risk. The owl means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It's this sense that they are, you know, sort of a ghost or a spirit or this very silent animal that comes and goes without you really even noticing. They're more than just cute, you know. Cute is like anthropomorphizing them, you know, but there's definitely like a spiritual connection I feel that I have within it. And I mean, for instance, in Hawaiian culture, you see an owl that's seen as a family protector. When you call them and they respond to you, there's a, no greater sense of feeling in the world <laughs> around that, that you can actually almost talk to this different species. So for in the case of the northern spotted owl, when a lot of that was going down in the early 90s, a lot of folks in the uh, small rural communities lost a lot of jobs when the owl was listed. So there was a, a really wide spectrum of how the owl has been seen even just in the last you know, 20, 30 years and it affecting people's livelihoods very seriously. So the research is very sensitive and I completely respect that. I'm not a Mescalero Apache tribal member. My tribe is in New Mexico. I'm from the Pueblo of Laguna, but um, I'm not from this place. So I'm very much a visitor the entire time I'm here. It's, it's a very culturally sensitive species. And so at the most basic level, there's sort of a negative connotation around the spotted owl to the Mescalero Apache. Hey, I'm almost down to my knees. That's just because I've been lazy to cut it. <laughs> For the Apaches, spotted owls are, um, well, not just spotted owls, any owl. They, they tend to be messengers. It's not a blanket across the board that owls are bad, they're taboo or whatever, but for the most part, people are real uncomfortable when they see them. Because it was really hard for tribal council, even though they were, they were worried about the economic impacts to the tribe with, with the listing of the spotted owl, you know, and, and that's taking care of your people, making sure your people have jobs and making sure they have food to feed their families and clothes and so forth.
for the council, they would probably say that not all conservation is good. There's a reason why the environmental movement happened, but now I think it's become this way for people to get involved with things and not really understand. So like a good example here, we're in the Southwest, you know, we get 25 to 30 inches of precipitation a year. So that's taking into account rain and snow. We're not the rainforest, you know, they get 10 times the precipitation. I mean, a couple hundred inches a year, a totally different type of forest ecosystems. I understand people have good intentions, but you know, like the road to hell is paved with good intentions. There's a tremendous amount of urgency because these forests are really important. So forests are basically at the tops of all the watersheds. This is where all the water comes from for the Southwest. This is habitat for a huge number of plants and animals. And then it's tremendously important for people. People come to, to these areas in great numbers. There are also some very special connections because these are ancestral homelands and places of great cultural and spiritual significance to people. The owl, it's not a bad omen, it's only a messenger, it gives us a message, things that might be bad that's going to come our way, it tells us, hey, it's time to pray, time to pray for your family. Time to pray for somebody that might be ill. Maybe it's time for somebody that has finished their walk on Mother Earth. Is that why people fear the owl? We don't fear them. We don't fear them. Some people have misconception and they go to the extreme and then they began to fear things that were created by God. We live in harmony with those things. We don't bother them, we don't interfere with them. They have their own way of life, but at times they communicate with us and they tell us things that we need to know as a people, that we need to listen. And when the world is changing, we need to listen. And the climate, if it's going to change in this universe, we need to listen. The owl, to some degree, drives a lot of what happens in our forest management and how what we can and can't do in the forest. And so it's, it's sort of a natural species to study in that way because it has such a large footprint. And so ironically now we're looking at not necessarily clear cutting out their, their habitat, but thinning out their habitat. So we expect to see more issues related to the spotted owl habitat with climate change. Basically what it's, what it's likely to mean is going to be factors like increased severe wildfires, increased outbreaks of insects and disease that can kill trees, the trees are greatly weakened by dry, hot conditions, and so it makes them more vulnerable. And so the fact that we are facing this really big, complicated issue makes our work even more valuable because, again, the, the tribe is um, very active with their management, and so here's a place where we can sort of look at how do we find that balance. I think we have a really strong legacy of forest management here. I, I'm really concerned that we will lose it in a few years and I, I'm really concerned to pass on the things we've learned over the years. But it's kind of becoming a lost art. Forestry is not something people go to school for nowadays. I, I think that's where we really need to kind of stop and invest back into our people. Really cultivate them and, and nurture them and help them get into some of these positions.
There are very big reservations in the West uh, with lots of natural resources that are being eyed a lot more as human, the human population grows and we use you know, more of those resources. And uh, many of those reservations hold very unique natural ecosystems. And um, it's going to be imperative for uh, Native American biologists to try to understand the consequences surrounding extracting those resources as well as conserving the habitat. And I think it will uh, be up to us to come back to with our, our own culture and seeing how that those wildlife species fit into our own culture. Western science has a lot of great knowledge, um, but in most cases it's more of a short-term knowledge. Whereas TEK, or traditional ecological knowledge, indigenous science, native science, um, that has more of a long-term perspective and more of a holistic uh, worldview. If I think combining those two, that's really what's going to help us solve some of our most complex ecological problems today. I think it's important knowing that this species exists. And if the health of the wildlife community starts to decline, it's sort of an indication that the health of the human community is declining as well. So they're uh, linked so tightly together. We spent a lot of our time living in a city, not really noticing what God has given us out there, such as the birds that you are talking about. Spent time alone in the mountains. Spent time alone with what God has created and communicate with it. And then you will see 